Patrick. Good afternoon. Yesterday we started with uh, uh, chapter two perforating. We learned how why perforating is important. Perforations are important. <coughs> what type of uh, charts we use, and uh, the uh, we <coughs> learned the most used uh, charge type uh, shape charts the components of the shape charge, how it works, how it penetrates uh, with different uh, configurations and different liners. Is there any questions to yesterday, uh, what we learned yesterday on uh, charge, shape charge, how it works, the um, detonation, uh, Explosives, etc. Okay, if there is no question, I'll continue on <coughs> factors influencing the charge performance. First, uh, as we said, gun size. Again, uh, I would like to remind you that gun, when we say gun, it is a system or a equipment which contains uh, the several charts. This is a capsule gun. Capsules are these small capsules which the charts are put inside. And this is the uh, <coughs> expandable, or uh, maybe not expandable, but this this is the gun, and this is the carrier gun. When the uh, charts are put inside of the uh, pipe with scalloped uh, areas or scalloped points uh, for the charge. These scalloped areas uh, are thinner, <coughs> have thinner coverage, uh, metal coverage, so uh, it is done to ease the uh, way or the um, it's done to minimize the <coughs> resistance of this carrier to the gun, uh, sorry, the charge uh, performance. Okay, so the gun size, the size of this gun uh, in terms of diameter, uh, will dictate the explosive charge size because the larger the gun, the larger uh, the charge you can uh, put inside. And <coughs> make uh, make sure that you you uh, understand that the both entrance hole diameter. Uh, and the uh, penetration distance or length are dependent uh, of the uh, weight of the explosive charge. So the more charge, uh, the, the, the higher, the, the larger the, the diameter of the penetration and the uh, longer the penetration length into the reservoir. <coughs> yeah, sorry, and something happened to the screen. What happened to screen? So, I don't you know. Can see this? Blurs. No. No. Nobody can see. Uh, it? Yeah, no. I also can see. I can see. I can see. You can or cannot. I can I, see. I, I, I will join again. I will join again. Screen is blur. Right. I can't see anything. OK. 
AI. Honestly, don't it's like, know what's it's like the screen frozen. And when you change the slide, maybe? I haven't changed the slide yet. Oh, then I don't know. There is uh, in chat box, you can see the uh, uh, screen. You cannot. Maybe you restart the sharing. Yes, it's going to be fixed. What about now? <clears throat> yeah, it's okay. It's okay. That's okay. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, <clears throat> as I said, uh, the the larger the gun size, the larger uh, charge we can put inside the uh, explosives. We can put inside the charts and. <clears throat> Okay, let's start uh, start from the beginning. So, keep in mind that gun is the whole system, including the carrier and the charge itself. And there are some capsules guns. When uh, the charge is put into small capsules, individual capsules, and uh, <clears throat> fixed to the carrier, and there are uh, carrier guns with the uh, a pile of the charts uh, put in the uh, pipe with the scalloped. These are scalloped um, points that are aligned with the charge uh, placement. So these scalloped uh, <coughs> areas or points uh, has a, have a uh, thinner uh, metal coverage to uh, minimize the effect on the gun, uh, charge performance. Okay, so uh, for the <clears throat> the larger the gun size in terms of diameter, and that will be uh, dictated by the uh, diameter of the casing or tubing, depending on uh, are you running the uh, wire line uh, through tubing or through casing or you are running the tubing uh, conveyed uh, perforations. <clears throat> this, uh, the diameter will be dictated by the tubing or casing diameter, and the, the diameter of gun is dictating the weight and <clears throat> amount of uh, explosive charts put on the, put inside the uh, charts. So the larger so larger gun, the larger uh, charge, the larger charge, the uh, longer penetration and larger entrance hole diameter. Okay, but <clears throat> remember that for the constant weight of the explosive, you may get uh, either longer penetration or uh, larger uh, longer penetration or larger uh, entrance holes, okay? And it will depend on, <coughs> sorry for my voice, something. It will depend on the uh, charge configuration as we talked uh, yesterday. If we have a smaller uh, <coughs> angle apex or conical shape of the charge that will provide longer uh, penetration with the uh, narrower uh, entrance hole 
if we have a higher, larger angle uh, conical shape, then it will provide larger entrance hole with the uh, shorter penetration depths. Okay, and that uh, all uh, both are serving for their own purposes. We talked about uh, that yesterday. Uh, depending on the uh, purpose of the well, depending on the plans for the well, are we going to produce it uh, straight away with the um, completed perforations or we are going to uh, uh, stimulate it with the um, hydraulic fracturing and propons or we are going to gravel pack it uh, uh, followed by following by um, Followed by sorry, followed by a, a acid simulation to uh, eliminate effect of deformation damage. So <clears throat> again, uh, the gun size and charge size will dictate or will drive the uh, entrance hole diameter and penetration. So if you want to make a larger hole or longer uh, penetration. You need to think about larger uh, gun, larger uh, charge size. Uh, but the, that will depend on your uh, well, on your casing diameter or tubing diameter, depending on how you are going to perforate it. We will talk about this, uh, uh, the perforations conveyance into the hole, into the uh, well in a few slides later. So just remember that the larger the gun, the larger the shape, uh, sorry, the charge, and the larger the charge, the uh, larger the entrance hole and uh, penetration depths. However, uh, well, uh, not however, but on the other hand, for the constant weight of the explosive, uh, for the same uh, weight of the explosive, same uh, size of the charge, we may have uh, greater penetration depths or uh, larger uh, entrance hole. Okay, not both. Uh, we <coughs> either we have longer penetration but smaller uh, entrance hole, or vice versa, we have a larger penetration uh, diameter and uh, shorter penetration depths. Okay, uh, can you see the, can you see the slide change? It's still on the charge performance. Uh -huh. Has it changed? Not yet. Okay. Okay, I will continue. Uh, you will let me know if the if the change happened. Okay, uh, another factor influencing char charge performance is the temperature uh, because the temperature inside the well bore because uh, the pr pressure inside the well bore uh, does not affect the charge performance, uh, but the temperature may affect, will affect the um, explosives because explosives are chemical uh, compositions and the high temperatures, especially uh, at the longer exposure to the high temperatures, will uh, degrade significantly the charge, the explosives and the charge performance uh, will be uh, affected in negative way, so way, so the um, the charge may even not uh, explode at all. And therefore, before uh, designing the perforation uh, job or perforation operations, uh, we have to think about what are the temperatures uh, at the depths of the uh, penetration, uh, what are the gun. Um, <coughs> Uh, conveyance methods. If we are running uh, tubing conveyed methods, then we have to take into account that the guns 
perforation guns and charts are going to be at these reservoir conditions for longer time uh, or at higher temperatures uh, at longer time. So we have to choose more uh, temperature resistible uh, explosives. And you have seen some uh, explosive uh, explosives plot uh, time again te against temperature. So that is kind of a, a guideline for the choosing the uh, correct explosive for correct conditions. Did it change? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Teacher, may I ask question? Yes, of course. Well, what is extended exposure times? Extended of exposure exposure times is longer exposure times. Again, when we run wireline conveyor uh, perforations, that means we run the car perforation uh, gun into the well, then we. Uh, Perforate the well and we pull out the wire line and then we can continue on completion or testing or whatever or tubing uh, running into hole or whatever uh, completion operations are uh, planned. With the tubing conveyed uh, uh, sorry, perforation guns, uh, the perforation guns are lowered into the uh, well bore with the tubing. So we run the tubing into the well and uh, do the perforation and then start producing. Uh, in this case, we uh, the, the perforation gun goes first because it is going to be at the end of the tubing, at the lowest part of the tubing. Okay, And in some wells, in deep wells, the uh, the um, running uh, tubing into hole may take more than a week, okay, and that means the guns and charts will be uh, exposed to the temperatures, well bore temperatures, for longer time. That might be uh, days, that might be hundreds of hours, and. Uh, <coughs> If something goes wrong, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so the uh, extended exposure time is the how long uh, or longer time that the charge, the perforation charge, will be exposed to the um, wellbore temperatures. Okay, is that clear? Yeah, thank you. Yes, sir. Um, teacher, if we have exceeded the degradation time of this uh, explosive material uh, and we should uh, get it back to surface, uh, can it be dangerous? Like, can it uh, explode at surface? Yes, it happens and therefore it should be uh, uh, dealt with, with high uh, great care. Uh, it is very rare that we uh, pull out the uh, perforating uh, equipment without perforation uh, back to the surface. We would anyway perforate it, try to perforate it, and if the uh, <coughs> and then, well, uh, usually with the tubing conveyed uh, perforations. We leave the tubing there because we uh, did it because uh, to uh, for the some reasons uh, we will talk about that in later uh, slides. But uh, <clears throat> and the we would leave the perforation uh, tool, perforation gun in the uh, in the well bore uh, when we do tubing conveyed perforations. Uh, so. Uh, this is uh, one of the uh, kind of disadvantages of tubing conveyed guns because we don't know which perforations uh, performed how and how they performed, how they uh, shot. Okay, uh, only well testing may tell us how the perforations done, but still we will not know which perforations, which charts actually. Uh, 
uh, exploded, which charge didn't. Okay, so therefore uh, it's always more safer to run the explosives that are at safe site uh, with the longer uh, temperature, uh, sorry, higher temperature resistance and uh, with longer exposure time. Okay, so we wouldn't uh, run back uh, or pull out the perforation tool to change perforation charge because it's very, very dangerous. Thank you very much. I understand it. Okay, so <clears throat> next uh, factor is uh, the gun clearance. What is gun clearance? The gun clearance is the uh, distance between the gun and the casing wall. And this, for the large gun size, uh, large diameter guns and guns uh, run into the casing, uh, it's not a problem because uh, more or less it is uh, the, the standoff from the casing uh, is um, more or less even. But when we do uh, wireline uh, <coughs> perforations and we run the wireline perforations through tubing and then uh, going into the casing to perforate the casing, then of course the uh, diameter of the um, gun will be, should, uh, must be uh, um, less than the tubing diameter and that will create a big difference. Can you see the slide? Yes, teacher. So that will create, that will be, that will mean that uh, there is a big difference between the gun diameter and the casing. And the gun, uh, <coughs> depending on the uh, deviation, even if it's a small deviation, even if it is a uh, vertical well, there might be some uh, undesirable, uh, very small deviations, but that small deviation, deviations will uh, drive the gun, wireline gun, to be uh, kind of sit on uh, one side of the casing. And that will cause, that will lead this type of perforations when only these three perforations uh went through the damage zone but this one was ineffective okay so the gun clearance uh, therefore we uh, uh, mostly use in uh, well uh, in some cases we must uh, we have to use the wide line through the tubing when for example when we have to uh, reperforate a uh, um, operating well or uh, perforate new zones in the operating well. Uh, so uh, therefore, in some cases, we may use uh, the magnetic positioning device. When we put some magnets on one side of the uh, gun carrier, and this magnet will stick the gun uh, to the uh, uh, <clears throat> one side of the, tube, of the casing, so to make sure that we penetrate the uh, forma uh, formation damage zone radius and we go further into the reservoir. Uh, in some cases, we may use 90 degree uh, <coughs> uh, gun phasing to get this configuration and to get uh, at least two uh, good penetrations into the reservoir. Okay. Uh, next two uh, factors influencing charge performance is related to the uh, compre compressive strengths uh, of formation rock. Of course, that's uh, obvious that the stronger the formation, the uh, more compressed the formation, the uh, um, Uh, less penetration will be expected. And on the other hand, <clears throat> uh, the strength of casing and the radial cement feed 
will also affect the uh, performance of the charts. So the stronger the uh, stronger and thicker the uh, casing, um, and the uh, the better the cement job around the casing, which provide which will provide uh, which provides the radial support for the cement for the casing, the uh, charge performance will be affected in a way that shorter penetration uh, through because most energy will be spent most energy will be spent on the going through this uh, uh, casing and the uh, cement uh, sheet <clears throat> of course in the thinner uh, casing we may get better uh, penetration but remember that uh, the perforation is very hard job very uh, strong job and uh, we uh, we have to think about first safety because the thinner uh, casing uh, may be destroyed by the perforation jobs and that will uh, cause the failure of whole perforation job. Okay. Another factor influencing charge performance is the charge ar ar arrangement. The charge arrangement includes First of all, the uh, gun phasing. So, how many uh, the, the angles the guns are, the charts are uh, arranged, and the number of uh, charts uh, in one foot or in one meter, so in unit of uh, length of the gun. Okay. <clears throat> and the number of charts are counted uh, for whole uh, length of for whole. Um, radius of the uh, perforating gun. So here we can see uh, 45 to 135 phasing. Uh, what is 45 and 35? 135. It's between first uh, charts. If we go from uh, left to right, running like, like this, from the first charge to the second one, we have a uh, 135 degree, but from uh, the first uh, charge and the next charge on the next line, we have 45 degree. So that's uh, therefore we have 45 to 135 degrees per phasing. And if you count this, uh, this is the uh, charge. Uh, Perforation density, the actually amount of the charge per the uh, unit of the uh, lens, usually foot, so it's called shot per foot, SPF. Okay, so obviously the uh, <clears throat> smaller the, uh, except of course the zero uh, phasing, smaller the phasing the better for the uh, reservoir uh, performance or well performance because the smaller the, uh, the smaller the angle the uh, more the flu flow into the well bore is more close to the radial flow okay whereas if we have zero phased uh, perforation then the uh, fluids coming to the uh, to the well bore will have a some kind of uh, very uh, tortuous uh, tra trajectory to achieve this. And of course, this will cause even more, uh, even higher uh, turbulence effect. And that will, uh, turbulence effect will uh, lead to the uh, higher skin due to the turbulence. Okay. And on the next picture, you can see the difference between the four shots per foot, the same four shots in both cases, but in uh, left hand side, we have a zero phasing when all shots are oriented into <coughs> sorry, one direction. Uh, on the second part, the picture on the right hand side, we have four shots per foot, four shots per foot. So uh, at 90 degree phasing, when we have 
the charts are oriented at uh, four different uh, directions at 90 degree. So of course this, uh, the, uh, the four shots per, four shots per foot, uh, 90 degree phasing, will provide will uh, better well performance because it's more uh, close to the uh, radial uh, flow effect. Any questions so far? <coughs> What's mechanical skin? It's written there, mechanical skin. Mechanical skin, uh, it is a part of skin. It is a skin which is uh, created by uh, some uh, abstractions in the uh, well bore or in the between the reservoir and well bore uh, due to the uh, some uh, kind of uh, you can see here uh, there is a uh, flow is this is the mechanical skin because uh, the flow coming to the well bore uh, kind of met meets the uh, some abstraction and it has to go over the uh, to reach the entrance and this causes uh, high turbulence high uh, it's and it's called mechanical skin mechanical skin is more wider uh, <coughs> term it includes all mechanical uh, abstractions on the wall performance in, in the wall bore that reduces the wall performance. And here it's a it's a one kind of uh, mechanical skin because here we have mechanical abstraction as a well bore without a uh, hole or perforations and the flow to, uh, to enter the uh, well bore flow has to overcome this uh, abstraction, go into the uh, only uh, hole or only perforations in, on the uh, well bore and flow into the uh, well bore. Okay. okay. So uh, <clears throat> we are considered uh, how the um, perforation gun arrangement uh, affects all, all the factors that affect the uh, uh, perforation uh, charge and gun performance and here the how the uh, the practical issues in the density and phasing are the perforation gun uh, okay, uh, okay the uh, <clears throat> as we said perforation gun uh, diameter and casing ID is the driving factors of course again in uh, both in density and phasing because if we have again uh, uh, large diameter casing and if we have to uh, run the uh, wireline perforations through tubing then we have a problems with the clearance then we have to uh, work on the uh, uh, work with the ma magnetics and uh, magnetic uh, magnetics will uh, only zero uh, phase or in best case uh, 90 degree uh, 90 degree um, phasing for only for to have only two directional uh, perforations. Uh, on the other hand, formation properties are also uh, the uh, issue because uh, the formation uh, stress direction is important to understand. Permeability and isotropy uh, is, uh, should be understood. Uh, the um, vertical and uh, horizontal permeability relationship or ratio is very important here we will see in next uh, slide uh, formation productivity as well uh, how how much formation can provide what is the uh, formation productivity 
and all these can uh, will affect the uh, well will be affected by density and phasing of the gun uh, and uh, of course the uh, it, it, it will depend what kind of uh, compilation design we would like is it going to be a gravel pack is it a limited entry did we uh, drill through a whole reservoir or uh, we just enter it uh, reservoir to the half and then uh, complete the well. All these are uh, uh, mutually affect uh, the density, uh, the perforation uh, gun design in terms of arrangement, in terms of density and phasing of the uh, perforation gun. Okay, in this slide you can see the uh, chart where productivity ratio is plotted against the perforation lens with uh, for different perforation density and uh, perforation phasing. Okay, so what you can see here, <coughs> as we said before, zero phasing will provide least uh, productivity and it's understood because it will create it will create a uh, mechanical skin uh, or higher turbulency a more tortuous trajectory for the flow and uh, but increasing the um, phasing to 180 degree, so it means we have a uh, two uh, opposite sides side, uh, directed um, perforations will improve the performance of the well. And at the longer penetrations, it will be even better than open hole, open hole well productivity. Okay, and then uh, in the uh, 90 degree phasing, when we have a four direction uh, operate oriented uh, perforations, our uh, per wells, our well will perform even better, and the higher, the, the longer the perforation lens, it will go beyond the open hole. Uh, uh, productivity. Now, one interesting uh, phenomena I would like to share with you. Uh, you can see in all three cases, going from four shot per foot density to eight shot per foot density gives a substantial uh, effect or increase in productivity. However, going from eight uh, shot per foot to 16 eight, uh, shot per foot he, uh, provides much less uh, incremental productivity. It is even more or even uh, more substantial difference at uh, better phasing. For example, at 180 phasing, you can see from four shot per foot to eight shot per foot, we have this amount of incremental uh, productivity, but between 8 and 16, we have uh, less than half of this incremental. And if you look at 90 degree phasing, then between the four shot per foot and eight shot per foot, we have this large, uh, huge difference in productivity, but uh, <coughs> with the uh, increasing uh, from 8 to 16, this effect is getting smaller. Can you guess what is the reason for that? Yes, go ahead. Uh, is it about distance between holes at one side? Because in zero phasing, uh, all holes are at the same side, 
And if uh, distance between them is less, or density of them is much, uh, much more, uh, maybe from turbulence effect, uh, losses uh, might be high. But in the 90 uh, degree facing, distance between them is less. Like um, repeat, uh, repeating of holes will be uh, after four holes. Uh, well, here we are con considering uh, for each uh, phasing option uh, the different uh, increase uh, uh, incremental productivity. Okay, so um, actually I didn't get your answer, but the reason is not about the um, orientation because again we are considering the same orientation. Say. Let's say, forget about the others. Let's talk about 90 degree phasing. You can see that from four shot per foot, we have a incremental productivity of this amount. And from eight to 16 uh, shot per foot, we have even uh, less than half or third of incremental productivity than between four and eight uh, shot per foot. Anybody, uh, you can write your answer on the uh, comment uh, box. Can I Any other opinion? ideas? Sorry? Can I say my opinion about the question? Of course. I think I'm here, as, the, as the perforation density increases, they start to prevent the conductivity of each other. Uh, they are too close to each other. For example, when the perforation density is 16, and uh, they don't allow to easily uh, conduct this flow between each other. Well, <coughs> you, uh, I mean, you are kind of a uh, coming to the uh, right answer, but in the wrong way. Uh, actually, your answer is wrong because the more uh, density, the more holes uh, in the, uh, in the uh, casing and the more pass or connection passes between the reservoir and well bore. So that's uh, not a, uh, the, the more The uh, the more perforate the more density the perforate the performance should be better, but the, uh, the but it has a limited uh, extent. And what is the limit? Maybe pressure decreases for each shot. No. No stand production is not the answer. OK, what happens as we increase the density? Shot density. To which limit we are approaching? The limit of uh, reservoir thickness, formation thickness, right? Not casing, the reservoir thickness, because the more density, the more uh, reservoir is exposed and the reservoir thickness is limited. And when we become closer, uh, when we increase the density, we just get, uh, and we, uh, this is not open hole, this is perforations, right? Uh, but as we, uh, increase the density of the uh, perforations, we increase the pass, number of passes between the reservoir and uh, well bore, and the limit is coming closer to the limit of thickness. Okay, therefore, effect of 
increasing density is less and less. It will not stop. It will increase every time as we increase the uh, density, but the rate of increase, like here, from four to eight, we have we see a uh, huge effect. But from six, uh, sorry, eight to sixteen, we have less effect. If we increase it to from sixteen to twenty-four, it will be even less effect. But it still will be uh, effective, increasing the productivity but with much less rate. Which th thickness do you take into account? The thickness the that we opened with the well, with the well. Whatever thickness the well can see. You see this. Uh, this is the. Uh, depend, uh, doesn't matter uh, the uh, the phasing, this one or this one. Okay, we have here four shots per foot, right? To increase this, uh, by, by increasing these shots per foot, we will have some uh, additional shots here, 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 right? Can you see the mouse? Yes, we see it. So, uh, and as we increase. So for in this case, we have only four holes. As we increase the number of holes in the casing or number of passes through the uh, uh, casing, we coming uh, closer. And if we uh, assume that this is our reservoir thickness, we coming closer to reservoir thickness. OK, and uh, therefore, as we increase the holes in this thickness, we are getting to closer to uh, reservoir thickness. And therefore, the effect of increasing shot density will be uh, less and less each time we uh, increase the shot density. Still not clear? I understood your opinion, but I don't agree with you because I think for both cases, for for example, four uh, shot per foot and no four uh, eight shot per foot and four sixteen shot per foot, the thickness is one foot. How it can reach the limit of reservoir layer? No, 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 uh, it's not about one foot. It is now for, it is showing one foot. Uh, forget about one foot. Even uh -huh. if it is one foot, OK, even if it is one foot, but this is not uh, the, assume that this is the thickness of the reservoir. But even if it is one foot, OK, uh, by having four shot per foot, we have only four uh, hole, OK? And increasing it to eight shot per foot, we increase uh, the number of passes. But the places to put those holes are limited by the thickness of the reservoir. Okay, even if it is one foot. Each time we uh, increase the shot per foot uh, density, what we decrease, we decrease the places where we can put additional uh, perforations. OK. And that is uh, the more we uh, make holes in the uh, uh, casing, there are less ch less chances that at the next increase we will get a large effect on that because we already uh, have uh, we are uh, uh, coming to uh, coming to closer to the limit of the whole exposure of the reservoir, whole uh, thickness of the reservoir. Thank you, Elhamad. No, did you understand it? Thank you is uh, is not a good for me.
I thought so. So tell the truth, I personally didn't okay. understand. Hey, brothers. What do you think about that? No, I totally agree with you. It seems to be logic. No, not uh, okay. Logic or not logic? Did you get um, the point? Yes, I got, to be honest, first I thought about some uh, pressure stuff like greater pressure loss, but um, yeah, the point that you were explaining, I got completely like, thank you. Okay, I mean, what do you do not agree with? Mm. Let's do like that. I will ask. I tried to explain it to me. <laughs> <laughs> ask, ask me. I didn't ask. Uh, I touched to explain. I asked. I touched to see if she understood it or not. Ask me. You already, you already explained, but it's. I think it's my fault. I don't understand. Okay. Think about geometry. Think about limit of the reservoir. Uh, I mean, the thickness of the reservoir that is opened by the well, okay, yeah. exposed to the well. And uh, then think about, this is about rate of increase, okay? How much, at, how, at what rate the increase will happen? Again, it's not about uh, will it increase or not. It will increase every time you increase the shot density of the perforations, okay? But the rate of increase, for example, from four to eight, it increased, let's say, uh, from uh, for the same, uh, let's say, for the same, for the ten uh, inch penetration, it increased from one, some, uh, let's say here, it increased from one to uh, one point uh, zero eight, right? But at the same uh, penetration. From 1 to 0 0.8, it increased to 1.1 uh, 1 .1 or 1.09. You see the difference? Okay. Yes. And this, this is because every time you increase the shot per foot density, you coming close to the uh, open hole conditions. And you can't at the... Uh, let's say if you, uh, you 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 may get the situation that you uh, perforated whole screen uh, sorry uh, casing with the perforations at uh, very high density. Okay, so how much it will affect the next perforation on this? Maybe the reservoir will deplete and. No, no, forget about any depletion, any pressure. That is not about the depletion. That's about well performance. This is productivity. This is one time measured uh, value. This is not about uh, rate or, the, or how much the world will produce. This is about productivity. So uh, rates over the uh, uh, pressure change. So it is a, a productivity change, okay? Forget about pressure, uh, the the uh, pressure decline, or you know, this is productivity change. So, how this will change by increasing uh, the density, uh, perforation density? Okay, it it's like. Uh, uh, okay, I understood somehow it. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, uh, let's say uh, you have a, uh, let's say, Kalbir bilirsin hadi. Kalbir. Kalbir bilen var nedir? Okay, <gülüyor> mesh. <gülüyor> mesh, you know what's mesh? Alak. <gülüyor> okay. Uh, when you have a mesh with four uh, uh, holes in it, and then if you increase the uh, number of holes to eight, your flow through this mesh will be uh, increased twice uh, or even more. But as you uh, increase the number of holes, 
the increase of flow through it, the rate of increase will be less and less because you will be coming close to the radius of this mesh. Do you understand that? This is, uh, think about increasing rate uh, of the incremental uh, productivity, not uh, rate itself, rate, uh, uh, not the uh, productivity itself. Uh, uh, incremental rate, how much, for how much it will increase from 4 to 8 and 8 to uh, 16. Not the uh, absolute incremental, but uh, the relative incremental. OK, uh, so uh, we uh, came to the end of the today uh, lecture. I hope it was useful. And think about this uh, perforation density and uh, productivity ratio, how it affects why it is uh, the incremental rate rate of increment uh, uh, increase is changing like this and hopefully uh, you will get a uh, correct answer okay did you have a uh, tutorial yesterday yes we had i think one group had another one didn't I had many uh, NM 16.2, PA 16.2 didn't have tutorial yesterday. Um, instead, we will have a session on Saturday, I guess. Um, okay. Have a man talk. Okay. Uh, another question about FTP. Uh, do we need to meet today? Do you have any questions or any uh, uh, consultancy? Turkan Hanım, Aytaç Hanım, the other members of the groups. Uh, well, if you ask us, um, we kind of had a meeting among each other yesterday. So um, we just continue working. I don't think okay. that we need any kind of consultants for now. Turkan Hanım. Yes, the same for our group. So there is no need for today consultancy. I guess no, not yet. OK, thank you. Thank you very much to all. Uh, see you next week, uh, inshallah. With better mood, I think, in uh, from the news uh, from the war, uh, from the Karabakh and the other uh, issues. OK, inshallah. So, so unfortunately, I uh, 